Welcome back to part three of the rooftop diorama build. Uh, as you guys can remember, we're building this, so let's just get into it. Um, as you can see, I already black based all the pieces like I mentioned in the last video, so we could just get into it and I could explain a couple things to you guys before we get started. So on the bottom of this, what I ended up doing is um, this part was complete. So what I did, I ended up taking it half an inch from each of this. So basically what I did, I just scored it right here all the way down and then I went along the edge and just popped off that part half an inch on this side and then the same thing on the other side so you guys can have a nice overhang to your diorama and so to finish up this video I'm gonna teach you guys how to do the texturing on the edges on the on the bricks on the side of the building and then dry brushing everything and then gluing everything together and then you guys will have a finished rooftop so and as, as you remember, we cut off this piece from the very first video. Um, I just want to explain something about that piece really quick. Um, so you guys can fit it on the very edge. I end up taking the same piece, measuring it out, and then drawing a line in the center of it. And then from that center line, I just brought it under here and then marked up the center line with the corner of the building and then draw the lines on the side. And we're just going to cut that piece off right now. So we could glue it on and texture that as we texture everything else. So as you remember, I'm just going to take my blade and go ahead and score the lines that I drew once. And then I'm going to extend my blade and make another pass on those same lines down. And then same thing on this side. And then the third time, I'm going to extend my blade a little bit more and then cut off the piece completely straight off. And there you go. And then if you have just little bits and pieces, you could just rip it off with your hand or shave it off with your blade. But as you can see, this piece should fit fairly well right here. And that would be the edge of your building. And nobody's perfect and I even messed up a little bit and it's a little uneven right here so I'm just gonna take my blade and cut off that little bit right there make it nice and even for us so now that we have this piece done I'm gonna go ahead and just hot glue this part right onto here to create the ledge for us so I'm just gonna grab my hot glue gun put a bead of hot glue right in the middle right there and then some on the sides right here I'm going to go ahead and glue that right onto the edge. Just going to hold it there until the hot glue holds it right onto its spot. Nice and sturdy because if you are going to put pose your figures on here or your pop vinyls or your statues, you don't want it snapping off or anything. You just got to make sure it gets a nice bond to it. And so right after this is done gluing right on here, we're going to end up texturing the whole brick side right here on the first top of the roof. And then I'm going to do the texturing on the bricks. And then all that's left is painting and then gluing the rest of the pieces on. And it's pretty much done. I'm pretty sure that's pretty good on there. Pretty well. Check the bottom. I do have some hot glue leaking. That's all right. Like I said too, I, I wouldn't use a hot, the high temp glue gun on this because it does have a tendency to sometimes warp the the foam. So I usually use the low temp. All right. So basically, all the texturing is we're going to use a hot glue gun again for the texturing. I'm sorry if I can't get this in frame. This is remember this is a really big piece, but basically we're just going to go on the edge with the hot glue gun. Try not to make big beads of hot glue. It's not gonna look as good as if you just go smoothly across. So basically all I'm gonna do at an angle, I'm just gonna go back and forth on this and just create this pattern on here. 
Remember, you don't want the bead of glue to be too big. And then you kind of want to go the opposite direction, just so it doesn't look like a zigzag pattern when you paint it up. And really, you could do this in any pattern that you want. This is what I just do, just for consistency when I make more of these. They come out more consistent looking. But then again, if you want each piece to be unique, you could go circles with the glue gun or any direction. And then I'm just going to flip it over and do this side. Same way. And then back the other way. And then I'm not going to do the top part of this because, like I said, if you do use it for... If you do use it for the top of, to put your figures on top of, you don't want any bumpy surfaces because then they're not going to be able to stand very well. And it is hot glue, so if you do get some on the top, you could just rip it off with your fingers or sand it off, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to do the other side. I'm going to do the same pattern. And sorry again, guys, if this is not in frame. Looks like I need another hot glue stick. And then again, I'm going to go in the opposite direction with the hot glue gun. other side from the top same pattern and then two you're gonna want to pattern this part out to texture it So I don't know if you guys can see that, but I got the front and the sides all textured out. And then we're gonna put this, this piece aside and wait for it to dry. We're gonna move on to the next piece, which was, was the bricks that we cut out earlier. Um, I just wanna show you, I went ahead to did, finish one side of it so you guys can see how it's gonna end up. And so it's easier for me to put everything together as soon as I done painting it both of them on this one video so I don't have to make an extra video for you guys so um, it's gonna end up turning to look like this so basically we just did the same texturing as we did with the top part right now with the hot glue gun in the same direction all over it and then I pretty much painted it up so I'm gonna actually show you guys how to paint this with the other piece so I already did the other piece right here remember we already black washed this from from the last episodes and and then I just did the hot glue like moments ago I did the hot glue like we did on the top and we're going to start painting this right now so you guys can see how it ends up looking like this. So we're going to end up painting the first top part which are kind of like the gray cinder block kind of look. And basically all I'm going to use for this is going to use that gray that I told you guys in the first video that you needed to get. So I'm going to get this, get my paintbrush ready for you guys to dry brush it and my palette. So basically what all the dry brushes is, um, you get a little bit of paint and you get your brush and then you just lightly dip your brush into it and then you wipe off as much of the paint as you can from the brush. As dry as you can until you only have a little bit of paint on there and then lightly, you don't have to press down on it, we're just trying to get the raised edges from that hot glue that we put on there for the texturing and we're just going to go over the just this top row of bricks. That's the, gonna be the gray part.
and that hot glue really comes out with the detail when you get hit it with this gray it really does make a big difference instead of just not putting it on there and just dry brushing this top row with just paint I really do like the texture that comes off with it and you just want to get it on this first row you don't really want to get it on the other bricks because they're going to be a red color so as you can see I'm just lightly going over it I usually like to take maybe put like two coats at, at most um, you could do more but the more of the black you cover up the less it's gonna have that shadow effect that we want so we're just trying to get the raised edges just so you can still see some of the black coming through and since we already have our gray paint on our palette I'm gonna put this aside and bring the big piece back since the glue is done drying and we're just gonna do the same dry brush technique on here um, I don't know if I could get this in frame for you guys, but I'm going to try my best since it is a big piece again. Just load up my brush and try to get much of the paint off of it as I can. And then the same technique, we're just going to go lightly over the raised edges where we put that glue. And depending the texture that you make from the hot glue on this, it's really going to depend the, the look that you're going to get. Like you could do it more symmetrical or you could do it more messy to make a more grimy look on it. It's really up to you how you want to do this. Or you could just not put the hot glue on there and just dry brush this and it'll come out the same pretty much. You just won't have those raised edges. So as I'm painting this and talking to you guys, trying to get this all dry brushed for you guys so we can move on to the next step, uh, leave down in the comments below, uh, what are you guys going to display on this? Are you going to put some mini pop vinyls on there? Are you going to put your Batman pop vinyl, maybe a Batman figure? Um, or are you more into the Marvel Legend line? Or maybe you have a small enough statue that you want to put on here? Uh, just leave it down in the, in, in the comments below and I'm really looking forward to reading your guys' comments. Like I said, since we do have our gray out, we're going to do the same dry brushing on the edge of the building. We're not going to do this part, the same gray. This is actually going to be a darker gray to have some contrast. So we're just going to use the same technique, load up the, the paintbrush with the gray, and then try to wipe off as much of it as we can off the brush. And then we're just going to go lightly over the top of this. And the more you take your time doing this and the more detail you try to put into it, of course it's going to come out looking better each time you do it. And even if you wanted to, you can make a square version of this so you can have like a normal rooftop instead of a corner. But at the end of the video, I will explain why I like doing it this way where it's just one corner. There's actually a reason for it. Like I said, we're just dry brushing all this.
really give it that kind of like a cement look to it. front piece right here too. I almost missed it. Not looking too bad, right guys? And this piece is pretty much done besides this part where we're going to come back to paint this a different gray. So now we're now bringing back our bricks after we dry end up dry brushing this. We're actually going to move on to this part. I'm going to switch to uh, a different brush because I am going to use a red color. Uh, we're going to use this brick red to do a dry brush over these. It's, it's going to be the same technique that we used with the gray, just with the red. And it really does make a big difference. So let's get some of this into our palette. And we're just going to grab some of this brick red paint on our brush. And again, try to wipe off as most, most of it as you can. And then we're just going to go across. Remember, you just want to go lightly. If you push down too hard with your paintbrush or if you put too much paint on your paintbrush, you're going to get into those cracks that we made. And it's really not going to show very well the brickwork that you actually carved out. So like I said, very lightly go across these bricks. And this one, I do like to do at least two coats, so you could get a nice uh, brick color on it. And again, you want to be careful too while you're painting these not to get any of the brick red paint onto this gray, because then it's not going to look very good. So basically after this paint is done drying, which it dries really fast since it is a dry brush, there's very little paint that we're putting at a time, so it dries fairly quickly. Um, we're actually going to glue everything together and then it's pretty much going to be complete. There's only about like um, maybe three more pieces that we have to finish up. And of course, you don't have to stop at uh, two coats with this. You could go as many coats as you want to your preference. But I just like to do at least two coats of this. That's how I like it. It shows a lot of the black still coming through. I really like that look. That's about enough paint on there. I think it looks close enough to the other one. It does uh, dry dark, so it is gonna get a little bit darker. Just keep that in mind. Um, I do have one of those smaller um, crappy brushes that I have for dry brushing. I did mention in my first video, um, we had a cherry red. That's basically just to pick out randomly a couple of these bricks. So it has a different variation of colors in there. Because if you look at a, a brick wall, it's not all just one solid color. So we're just going to open this up and I'm just going to come straight out of the cap since I'm not using much of it. And I'm just going to grab some of this red 
on this little tiny brush and again try to wipe off as much as I can from it and I'm just gonna pick randomly which bricks I want to dry brush this right on just to give it a little bit of different color variation on each brick and again you don't want to you don't want to do it like one here and then paint this one you want to do it very randomly as possible to give it a more natural look And the same thing with this one. I'm gonna pick out different bricks randomly to kind of give this red paint to. And you could go as heavy or as light as you want with this color. Like I said, the more different shades you have in here, the more realistic it's gonna look. And that's pretty much it for this piece right here. So you pretty much have the walls done for your diorama. I'm just adding a little bit more red on this one that I had earlier. Like it a little bit darker. Just blend it in a little bit more with the other bricks on the edges. there we go that's our two walls um, there is one piece I do want to show you guys let me put this aside real quick and let me move the paint out of the way um, there is this center column right here that you guys are gonna have to cut out so when the two walls join together let me kind of do this right they're gonna join like this I don't know if you guys can see that and there's gonna be a gap right here you're gonna have to cut out a small cube right there and basically it's the, the height of the walls that we already made and then it's going to be an inch squared and that's all that piece is going to do so you don't have like a gap in it when we glue everything together so that's what this piece is so we're going to set these two pieces aside and that piece that I just showed you doing the glue gun texturing on this too and then dry brushing that gray again so I'm going to do that right now for you guys I do know this is the front facing of my corner because I did like this uh, defect that I had when I cut it out I think it's going to give it more character, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for you guys right now. I'm going to texture this same way at an angle, move the glue gun back and forth. Try not to create too big of a bead. Same thing on this side because these are the front facing parts of where it's going to be at. There we go. And then same thing, go in the opposite direction to give it some different textures. There we go. We're gonna let that sit and dry a bit because the hot, hot glue is still hot. I don't wanna put paint directly on it and then it not come out too very well. So we're just gonna put that aside for a little bit to let it cool down. I do wanna explain while that's cooling down. Um, when I cut out all the pieces, I didn't cut out a piece right here. So when it's all done, you are gonna have the two walls coming straight down this way and you're not gonna have anything in the back. And the reason I didn't cut that piece out is because every time you build one of these, um, the back piece, you're gonna have to do the last piece, this piece last, basically because sometimes if you cut the walls out at a weird angle, sometimes it could change the dimensions of the piece back here. So um, I end up making this piece on mine. If you followed it the same way I did it in the same measurements in the same way I cut it, this piece is gonna measure 12 inches. So I cut it, I cut out 14 inches and I end up cutting two angles this way. So when I do put the pieces on, let me turn this around for you guys so you guys can see. So I cut it at an angle. So when I do put these brick wall pieces here, when they're flush, that this angle is gonna actually touch the wall perfectly and it's, it's, it's gonna fit very perfectly so it could stand up and give it really good stability. 
So like this piece too, it's gonna end up looking like this. So that's why I cut an angle on that piece. So just letting you guys know, after you build the walls and glue them down, measure this out and then cut that piece out for you guys. It might turn out differently for you guys. I just wanna make that aware to you guys. So it does look like the hot glue it has dried. And we're gonna bring our paint ballot back and we do have that same gray that we used earlier. Like I said, I'm gonna load up the brush and then take as much of it as I can off. And then we're gonna dry brush it the same way, just very lightly go over the raised edges. And there we go, that piece is already done. That quick. So I'm gonna set that aside, and then there's the last piece I need to talk about is this piece right here. I mentioned in my first video, you need a piece of cardboard, and that's what this that piece is for. So what you're gonna do, that first piece that we cut out, this piece, you're gonna actually take that measurement and then cut a piece slightly smaller than it. So when you cut your cardboard, it's gonna fit within it, not on the edge of it. So that's what this piece, I already cut this piece out for mine. And I'm gonna dry brush this with some gray too so it has the same paint as the wall. So I'm just gonna dry brush that. And then as soon as I'm done with this, we can actually start gluing everything together for you guys and it'll be done.